I'm Emma, and I'm 29 years old this year. My husband Jake is the same age, and we've been married for three years. We have occasional quarrels, but we've always respected each other and got along. Both my husband and I work full time. We were quite content with our jobs, but as our third wedding anniversary was approaching, we started to consider having children. I've decided to get married. Then, out of the blue, my brother suddenly announced, not only I, but also my parents were taken aback by the sudden news. He works at a reputable company and is a sincere and kind older brother I'm proud of. However, he had never mentioned having a girlfriend before. Everyone was astonished when my brother, who has always been somewhat detached from the opposite sex, suddenly announced his own intention to marry. As we dug deeper into the story, we learned that his girlfriend of six months was pregnant and they had decided to marry quickly. What's she like? Well, since David is more of a laid-back type, maybe someone like her would be a much better match. Our mother said with a chuckle, and our father nodded with a wry smile. Despite the surprise of a shotgun wedding, it was delightful news. They had already met her parents, and they asked us to meet her family soon. Can I come too? David often visited my husband and me because they got along so well. In fact, I think he enjoys spending time with my husband more than me. I think Jake will be happy too. Congratulations on your wedding, brother! His happiness seemed infectious and I felt joy too. Then came the day of meeting with the bride's family. We, my parents and us, a couple, were waiting in the hotel lobby. A few minutes later, David's girlfriend and her parents arrived. Her name was Misty, who I heard was 33, two years younger than my brother. In person, she looked even younger. Maybe it was because she was more beautiful and a bit flashier than I had imagined. My name is Misty. Nice to meet you, she said in a slightly nasal voice. Hearing her voice, my husband exclaimed, Huh? What's the matter? No, it's nothing, he replied after some thought. He replied after some thought, shaking his head. Despite his odd behavior, the meeting went smoothly. My husband's unusual demeanor was worrisome. But I turned to Misty when addressed. Emma, right? Let's get along, shall we? Yes, I hope we can be good friends too. With her warm smile, I found myself smiling back. Although I sensed something was off about my husband, I momentarily pushed that aside, relieved to see that my brother's wife-to-be seemed to be a pleasant person. With her warm smile, I found myself smiling back. Although I sensed something was off about my husband, I momentarily pushed that aside relieved to see that my brother's wife-to-be seemed to be a pleasant person. However, I was soon to realize that my instinct about my husband was right. After their marriage registration, my brother announced they were planning to have a wedding ceremony. It was the fervent wish of his wife, he said. I understood their sentiment. It was a once-in-a-lifetime event. She was already pregnant, and my brother wanted to fulfill her wish so they decided to hurry and hold the ceremony before her belly got too big. I was surprised when I heard they managed to secure a date for the ceremony a few months from now due to a cancellation. The couple decided to live in my brother's house about an hour's drive from ours. Hello there. Misty? It was my brother's wife standing at the door. Aside from dropping off some items, she had never visited our house before. I came to visit. You're off today, aren't you? Leaving me bewildered, she boldly stepped into the house. I hurriedly followed her in, finding her curiously looking around the house. Um, this- Of course he's at work. It's a weekday. That wasn't the point of my question. But she started talking before I could clarify. I'm just bored at home. You must be bored too, being home alone. Hey, I'm thirsty. Can you make me some tea? Feeling awkward, I went to prepare some tea, but when I came back, she had closed the windows and turned on the air conditioning. Tea is not good during pregnancy, right? I'm sorry, I don't have any caffeine-free options at home, only mineral water. Oh well, it can't be helped. Sorry. For some reason, I found myself apologizing as I handed her the mineral water. She sipped it, glancing around the room with a small smile on her face. What a small house. Excuse me. Hey, I heard you guys didn't have a wedding, right? I was taken aback by the abrupt change in topic. We got married almost three years ago, and yes, yes, we never had a wedding ceremony. When we were discussing a wedding after getting married, the COVID-19 pandemic hit. 
Luckily, we hadn't made any reservations yet. We had a long discussion, including whether we should have a ceremony at all, and in the end, we decided not to. Neither of us was particular about having a wedding, and we agreed to save the money for our future home instead. We explained this to both sets of parents and appeased them by agreeing to have wedding photos taken. Well, we weren't in a position to have one when we got married, but you still haven't had one, right? We decided together. But you still haven't had one, right? We decided together. Well, I guess you have to say that. She let out a dramatic sigh, resting her cheek in her hand. There was a slight smirk on her face. Poor thing. Not even having a wedding ceremony. She exaggeratedly declared that, not giving me a chance to retort. It's not that we couldn't have a wedding ceremony, but she didn't give me a chance to interject. So small a home and no wedding ceremony. Have you had kids yet? Well, truly pitiful. But what else could we expect, looking at you? I thought I'd misheard. But after seeing my sister-in-law's mocking grin, I realized she indeed uttered those words. Indeed, compared to my sister-in-law, I wasn't especially beautiful. I wasn't gorgeous or cute, nothing to write home about. This was the first time anyone had belittled me to my face like this. After that, she often visited on my days off and kept belittling me. Looking at the glass in the kitchen, she'd comment, truly a mess. But I suppose it can't be helped if you're busy at work, can it? And on days when I wasn't wearing makeup because I was off, maybe you should wear makeup even on your days off. Well, even with makeup, there's only so much you can do. Maybe that's why your husband doesn't see you as a woman. Every time she saw my actions, my home, my appearance, she laughed triumphantly and made snide comments. It wasn't outright ridicule, but she belittled me with the pretense of sympathy. She was my brother's wife, and their wedding was just around the corner. I felt like I shouldn't escalate things, so I didn't say anything to my brother or my husband. However, the stress of being ridiculed repeatedly was overwhelming, and my husband began to worry about me more and more. You seem to have lost your appetite, and your complexion doesn't look good. Maybe you should see a doctor. My husband kept saying this, and although I pushed back at first, I finally gave in. I thought it was stress, but recently I've been feeling dizzy, and my body won't accept food. I went to the hospital just in case, and I was in for a surprise. What's going on? Suddenly calling everyone together like this? My mother seemed uneasy because I had called my parents and my brother's family to our room. Looking at my mother's nervousness, my husband and I shared a small laugh. Actually, I'm pregnant. The first thing I thought when the doctor mentioned the possibility of pregnancy was, no way. I thought it was time to consider having children, but recently it was the last thing on my mind. What I thought was stress was actually morning sickness. Yes, I'm still in the early stages. Suddenly my brother raised his voice and gave me and my husband next to me a strong hug. When I turned around in surprise, I saw that his eyes were filled with tears. Big brother? Seeing my brother's reaction made me tear up as well. My parents joined in crying and afterwards we all shared a laugh. As we were all talking happily as a family, I suddenly felt a gaze on me. Duh. When I turned towards the gaze and gasped, my sister-in-law was glaring at me with a scary expression. You know, Misty? After returning home, my husband started speaking with a hesitant look. I feel like she was glaring at you with a scary look. So my husband also saw her face. Afterwards, when my brother spoke to my sister-in-law, she answered with a quickly constructed smile, so I thought I was the only one who saw it. Looking at my worried husband, I thought it might be better to keep quiet. Actually, ever since my brother got married, his wife often came over unannounced, and each time she continued to make snide remarks. As I choked on my words recalling the emotions of those moments, my husband quietly listened. So, I want to keep a distance for a while. I think I should keep my distance too. Yeah, but she might come over to our house all of a sudden. What should we do? What about going back to your parents' house for a while? My parents' house? Yeah, you've been struggling with morning sickness. Can you commute to work from there? If you do that, I'll feel relieved knowing you're at your parents' house. My husband reassured me, and I breathed a sigh of relief. We have no intention of telling my parents about this right now. 
I don't want to rain on the parade of my newlywed brother. And I don't want to blow this out of proportion. But right now I can use my morning sickness as an excuse to return home. Still, why is she attacking you so much? I have no idea. The first time I met her was at the pre-wedding meeting. The next time I met her, she was like that, and I really don't understand why. I feel like I've seen her before. Huh? Where? My husband had reacted strangely when we first met her, and... Um, I can't be certain. Although he evades, he says he'd like to look into it if he can. A few days later, we were to learn a shocking truth. Back at my parents' house, my husband frequently visited, and there were no more attacks from my sister-in-law. It was peaceful, just as my morning sickness was calming down, and the wedding day arrived without a hitch, we were getting ready at home, later than my parents, who had left early. When we were about to leave, my sister-in-law called. Ah, you've already prepared? Yes, we're about to head out. Sorry, we don't have a seat for you. So? My family and friends are coming today. I'd be embarrassed if they thought you were my family. So don't come to the ceremony. What? You might dress up, but, you know, with a background like yours, expectations are low. She was laughing on the other end of the phone. I'm the star of the day. You understand that, right? Does my brother know about this? Of course. He can't say no to me. Understood. But I'd like to talk after the ceremony. I'll consider it. Give me the gift later, okay? She hung up after having her say. My husband was looking puzzled at me, standing in stunned silence. Misty said, It would be embarrassing if I came to the wedding, so don't come. Tears started flowing as I spoke, unable to hold back. Are you serious? But it's my brother's wedding and he agreed to it. As my husband said, he comforted me by gently rubbing my back. He exhaled as if he had made up his mind. As my husband comforted me by gently rubbing my back, he exhaled as if he had made up his mind. Let's investigate the facts and talk to David properly. David is not the kind of person who would tell you not to come to the wedding. My husband seemed quite angry. We also need to clarify that. It would be better for David as well. I understand. Thank you. Let's investigate the facts and talk to David properly. David is not the kind of person who would tell you not to come to the wedding. My husband seemed quite angry. We also need to clarify that. It would be better for David as well. I understand. Thank you. One week after the wedding, my sister-in-law came alone to the restaurant I had called her to. Huh? She seemed surprised not just to see me there. And it's understandable. It wasn't just my husband and me. My parents, my brother, and even her own parents were all there. Why? I didn't hear anything. Is there something going on today? Yes, you told me to hand over the gift, right? Really? It was a joke. Did you need to go to this extent? I have something to discuss before I hand it over. It seemed suspicious to her that no one else was speaking. Her gaze was frantically shifting around the room. Misty, you worked for Sunrise Systems before your marriage, didn't you? And so what? Why did you quit? It's obvious, isn't it? I was getting married and having a baby. I thought my husband had accepted that. Why bring it up now? My brother sighed in exasperation. But that's old news, right? At that point, my husband chimed in. Actually, Sunrise Systems, where she worked, is a client of my company. They're almost like a subsidiary, so we get quite a bit of inside information. What? Seemingly at a loss for words, my sister-in-law fell silent as my husband spoke. I thought she looked familiar. She had an affair with a married supervisor at her workplace, felt uncomfortable, and quit, right? That's... Weren't your parents aware of that as well? As he looked at my in-laws, they let out a deep sigh. We apologize. She cried and said she was forced into the relationship by her boss. We... We believed her. We're really sorry. We thought it was all in the past. With heads bowed deeply, my sister-in-law's parents apologized. What the hell? I was forced by my boss. That's what I said. It's all in the past now. He sighed heavily and laid several photos out in front of everyone. How are you going to explain these? The photos showed my sister-in-law and a middle-aged man arm in arm entering a hotel together. Within only a week, my brother had gathered a lot of evidence. Right after the wedding, we consulted with my brother about my sister-in-law passing on all the information we had. We told him that we had been uninvited from the wedding 
that she had been nasty to us long before that, and that she had quit her job due to an affair. My brother had been told by my sister-in-law that I wasn't at the wedding because I had severe morning sickness. My brother apologized for everything she did even though he had done nothing wrong. And a week later, when my brother told me he was ready, I called my sister-in-law. My brother had called our parents and her parents here himself. This. That's why we called her here. As my sister-in-law tried to snatch away the photos in panic, she froze in despair upon hearing those words. With a sullen look on her face, my sister-in-law muttered, It's just, despite being so much less attractive than me, she looked so happy. Her family is so close-knit, too. She should be satisfied with that. But she even got pregnant. Well, I'm the one who should be the center of attention. Of course, it's my wedding. It's strange to have someone else being congratulated. Everyone was at a loss for words at the sight of my sister-in-law, who nonchalantly justified her actions. No, but I have a baby. How are you going to take responsibility? She stood up, placed her hands on her stomach and shouted, If it's my child, of course I'll continue to pay child support, even after the divorce. If it's really my child. After that, my brother and his wife divorced. She put up quite a fuss, but given her actions leading to the divorce, it was clear she was at a disadvantage. No court proceedings were necessary. When she was told she'd be legally accountable for a reasonable sum of money if they went to court, she conceded for a smaller amount. After the child was born, a DNA test showed that my brother wasn't the father. Because the child was born within 300 days of the divorce, by law the child was considered to be David's, my brother. It's a bit of a hassle that parentage can't be denied without going through civil litigation, but with the DNA test results in hand, there's no need to worry. The ex-wife continued her relationship with her former boss unabashedly and was thoroughly chastised when the boss's wife found out. Apparently this was the second time the wife found out. The first was when she quit her job and now again when she decided to divorce. The first time their parents had intervened, but after this incident it seems she's been abandoned even by them. For some reason, the ex-wife has been contacting my brother for help. He mentioned in a tired voice. Nearly a year after that incident, the phone rang. Hello? What do you think you're doing? The ex-wife's shrill voice echoed in my ears. My husband looked at me in surprise as our child lay sleeping in the crib. The ex-sister-in-law seemed out of sorts, frantic. It's your fault for never picking up, no matter how many times I've called. You've made me miserable, so I'm going to make you miserable too, she screamed over and over. Your current situation is your own making. Shut up. I won't be satisfied until you've gone through the same. If you keep playing dead, I'll burn down this entire apartment. I paled at the ex-wife's threats. My husband, who had been listening beside me, immediately reported it to the police. Then the ex-wife was arrested. The police arrived in time to prevent the arson, but since she couldn't get into our house, she had damaged our door and windows, seemingly caught in the act of vandalism. After that, fearing the ex-wife's stalking behavior, we decided to go ahead with our long-planned home build and moved there. We no longer live in the apartment the ex-wife knew about. That at least was a relief. We got busy with things like child rearing, but were leading a lively and enjoyable life. My brother comes to visit and plays with our child. Apparently, my brother has someone he likes recently, and occasionally he consults with my husband and me, blushing a bit. Let us meet her before you decide to get married this time, okay?